Thank you. We appreciate you coming out. Um, Robert R. West with Bernalillo County Fire Department's Public Information Office. Uh, so yesterday at approximately 4.54 p.m., we had a fire start in, uh, in a royal area on the north side of I-40 uh, in the Carnewell area. Uh, due to high wind conditions, it resulted in multiple spot fires on both sides of the freeway. Uh, this was a fire that was wind driven by the heavy canyon winds that are dominant in this area. Uh, fire activity calmed over the night um, due to quality fire suppression efforts uh, and favorable wind conditions uh, that we had. We've made a serious impact on this fire. Uh, at this time, we have 72 personnel on the fire, approximately 24 acres uh, of area that is burned and affected. We have two structures that were impacted by the fire. One was a residence and one was an outbuilding. This time to speak more about the fire, I'm going to introduce uh, Chief Lardy from Bernalillo County Fire Department. Thanks, uh, thanks, Lieutenant. Uh, so again, uh, as the Lieutenant mentioned, uh, we arrived uh, to find a fire in just off the just off the freeway on the north side of the freeway um, that was pretty rapidly spreading with pretty erratic winds, which are sort of common in the in the canyon here. Uh, we see that especially this time of year. That's a that's a relatively common occurrence. Uh, shortly after our arrival, the fire started to spread to both sides of the road. We had we had spread on the south side, uh, in which we immediately dedicated some resources, and then spread on the north side, which we dedicated additional resources, and we started calling for help. Um, we had a bunch of agency partners that came to our aid really quickly. Um, Burnley County, it, it's where I. It's important for me to mention those partners. Uh, Burnley County Sheriff's Department was was extremely helpful in helping us control the traffic um, and helping us with the evacuations early on. Uh, without their help, uh, it would this this would likely have not turned out near as well as it did. Um, we also had assistance from Burnley County Office of Emergency Management, Burnley County Roads Department, uh, the Albuquerque Fire and Rescue Department. Uh, Albuquerque Police, New Mexico State Police was here helping as well. Uh, the U.S. Forest Service and New Mexico State Forestry. Uh, we had some help from Rio Rancho Fire and Rescue, Valencia County Fire, and Sandoval County Fire as well. Um, Torrance County Fire sent units to help. Bosque Farms Fire Department sent units to help, and Las Lunas Fire Department sent units to help. As you can see, that's a that that was a, a very large response uh, for a rapidly growing a uh, rapidly growing incident um, that helped us bring this under control really quickly. Uh, we had a couple of initial uh, what we call air tanker drops uh, that were instrumental in kind of stopping the progression of the fire to the north and helping us be able to kind of set some containment lines and start to control the fire spread on that side. We worked through the night uh, with all of those agency partners uh, to make sure that we were able to control the fire uh, as best we could. This morning at 6 a.m., we turned over the management of this fire from Bernalillo County Fire Department to New Mexico State Forestry. And with that, I'll uh, turn it over to the Sheriff's Department to, to speak about their response. Captain? Sure. Good, good morning, everyone. Thank you. And uh, so what, what I'd like to touch on this morning from the law enforcement side is is just uh, a little bit of information about the road closures. So I'll probably provide you with the, the current status of, of the roadway situation here in, in and around the canyon. So you do have both directions of I-40 open at this time. Um, obviously, we're, we're uh, optimistic that we'll be able to maintain that. Uh, and I'll talk in just a moment about how disruptive it can be to close down the freeway. Uh, we also do have portions of 66 that are closed, specifically eastbound 66 at the Carnewell uh, Junction right here behind it, uh, where you all are standing. Um, but then we do have both directions of 66 open behind me, but we are still utilizing this area to shuttle in a variety of fire resources. Um, obviously, we have a pretty large command post and staging area behind me, but we feel pretty confident that after today, we'll be able to reassess this area, and it's possible that all of 66 will be opened after that time. You can probably also see over my shoulder PNM working on some power lines and some other infrastructure items that needed repair that caused a lot of the issues and, and the backup with the relation to the I-40 being closed. So as far as road closures go, we just want the, the public to know that we understand the, the inconvenience that that imposes on the motoring public. You've got an interstate that has tens of thousands of vehicles that pass through it on a daily basis. And so we're well aware of that inconvenience, and we apologize for that. 
We make every effort to work with our fire partners to let us know when they need it closed, and that's for a preservation of life, you know, hierarchy and decision-making process that's being done. And so we don't take those decisions lightly. And as soon as we're able to get the roadways open and safely do so, we will do that. So that gives you an update on what the, the road closure situation is. We did have an evacuation uh, call that went out last night here on the south side of the roadways um, in these neighborhoods here in Carnewell. Um, there were a couple of structures that were consumed by the fire. I can let uh, them expand more on that if they would like to on the fire side. Um, as far as I'm aware, no loss of life. That's the first and foremost thing of importance. Uh, so we're grateful for that. So we did have some inconvenience. I'm sure we had a lot of upset motorists and we apologize for that. Trust us. We, we know just how much of a burden that can be if you're just trying to get through. Um, and so we, we work diligently to, tr to try to resolve that as quickly as possible. That's all I have on the law enforcement side of things. At the conclusion, if you have follow-up questions uh, for me, I'm happy to answer those, uh, provided that I have the info, okay? All right, thank you very much. Next, we'd like to uh, bring forward a state rep, uh, Mr. Lawrence Crane, to speak uh, on behalf of the state's management of this scene. So Lawrence Crane, New Mexico Forestry Division, you know, this is just not one agency doing everything. Yes, we did take over the, the management of the fire this morning, but that's it's important to get Bernalillo County and AFR resources back out to be able to put out house fires and deal with everything else that they're doing. Uh, we're a small agency, but we're here to help whenever we can. The big important thing about this fire is that this was a teamwork. You can see all kinds of people out here. There's Forest Service folks, New Mexico Forestry Division, all the county. I mean, I, it's too many to notice. And the reason that's so important is because we've worked together for years to be able to come out here, know different faces, be able to right away gel together and figure out what needs to be done. You know, public and life safety is a big importance to the division, the governor, and of course everybody out here. With what's going on in northern New Mexico, it's very important to try to hit these fires hard and fast because of the lack of resources that we have. So. You know, I'm not out here representing one agency. I'm out here representing everybody because it's these folks behind us and out there on the fire, you know, the hotshot crew that's gridding the, the fire up here. That's the important thing that everybody's working together. And we did a, everybody did a really good job last night to do that, to catch this thing, to minimize impacts to the homeowners, the landscape and that type of stuff. So thank you. I'll be here for questions if you need them. Don't step back, your glasses fell. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Step away. So, uh, we appreciate it. This time, uh, we stand to answer any questions for a couple of minutes. So, um, I have a question for law enforcement. So, last night, about nine o'clock, a little after, uh, while we were setting up and everything was still closed off, we could visually see uh, a hot pursuit taking place westbound, uh, right through it, and we could also see officers running with spike strips in hand. Um, could you speak a little bit on that? Is there, was that uh, a pursuit from something else? Was it somebody trying to get home or were they apprehended? So unfortunately, uh, we had an individual who decided that um, they, they didn't want to abide by the barricades or the, the closure. Um, they did drive around a barricade and, uh, and proceeded into you know, a critical area where we had fire resources personnel on the freeway it's closed for a reason and I can't even begin to express just how dangerous that was and how selfish a decision that was for that motorist I get the frustration of being stopped for hours um, we did try to provide people with an alternate route you know sending people through Santa Fe I know even that's not ideal but when you have somebody take it upon themselves to drive around a barricade and then go in excess of 90 miles an hour directly through a, a very hazardous part of the area. There's power lines on the interstate. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things I could go into. So yes, unfortunately, the pursuit criteria for our agency was not satisfied for that particular incident. We did stay engaged with the vehicle until it was clear of all those resources as a matter of safety. Um, and luckily, we had enough time to get everybody off the freeway. So nobody was in any immediate physical jeopardy. And once they were clear of that area, you know, by our policy and, and obviously some parameters in the Safe Pursuit Act, we did have to terminate at that time. All right. Um, we did get a vehicle description license plate, and we'll, we'll be following up on that with that individual, hopefully here in the future. All right. Any other law enforcement questions while I'm standing here? No. Okay. Good.
We don't. The cause of the, inf of the fire is under investigation at this time. Uh, the, so, the the danger has been mitigated at this point. Uh, we're wrapping up the we're wrapping up the mop up operation on the Sandias, uh, and as we as we finish that part up, we'll move the or transition the scene back to the area of kind of kind of where it started in the in the center, right next to the freeway. Okay. So when do you guys consider it all the way out? Uh, it's it takes a, it takes a long time. We've got to go through we got to go through every area where there's been fire and make sure that there is no active fire, especially in the canyon. We always take that really seriously because we don't want to run the risk that that uh, embers are sort of kicked up with the winds. You know how they can they can kind of pick up pretty quickly and they're pretty erratic erratic out here. We uh, we take that really seriously, so we we have definitely take our time to do that. I can't give you a timeline to say we will be done at this point. We don't yet have a containment percentage that we've called. Uh, we're working on that right now. We're doing the analysis to figure out what that number is, and we'll get that to you as soon as we have it. What about evacuations? No, actually, we, we lifted the evacuations this morning, effective this morning, when we were able to get in and do a good assessment and make sure that there was no c continued and ongoing danger in, those, in the, the neighborhoods that we evacuated yesterday and uh, we were able to identify that there was there was no continued risk and so we lifted that evacuation early this morning. Can you give some more information on the two structures that were or they completely destroyed but I know it was a home and an outhouse? Yeah, yeah, one was one was a, a residential structure and the other was an outbuilding and they were they they were significantly damaged by the fire. Any injuries on the fire side or anything like that? No, no injuries, no injuries to firefighters. On the drops that took place last night, I know there was a variety of different ones, but majority, if not all, took place on this side. Right. Uh, I noticed that there weren't many, if any, on this other area. Was it because they were close to houses? Was there any reason why there weren't any drops in this area? So we do an analysis uh, before we make any decision to to. Uh, to make a drop like that, and we outweigh or we weigh the risk versus the benefit. Uh, at at the point where we were able to get the resource, we no longer needed it on that side of the freeway. We had already contained the fire that that existed there and had begun extinguishment efforts. And with the PNM working on the power lines, is there any um, issues that were caused by the lines or anything like that, electricity or anything? Yes, yeah, Captain Huffmeyer kind of alluded to. Uh, he talked about that that being a contributing factor for the extended delay in us opening the freeway back up. We had lines that we had a, we had a couple of poles that were burned through and that caused lines to sort of droop down over the freeway, uh, in, increasing the risk to motorists on the freeway. And we were just we were just unwilling to risk that. Uh, so we made sure that that was taken care of before we opened the freeway back up fully. Thank, Thank you. you all for coming out. We really Thank appreciate you. it.